So here are six different clauses that I have in my contract. Yo, this is Detour. I do a ton of mural projects. I do a ton of artwork everywhere. And a lot of times I have to have contracts so that I have an understanding with my client. These are the six clauses that I have in every one of my contracts. And a note, I will have a link in the description to an actual template of my contract that, that is stripped down so that you can use it and the verbiage from that contract in your contracts if you want. The first clause you need in a contract is the revision clause. The revision clause basically says this is how many times during the design phase you have an opportunity to make a revision to the design that I made. This helps prevent the artist and the client too from being in an endless cycle of me designing something and then the revision comes and then me designing the revision designing, revision, designing. That basically will drive an artist crazy. So this helps just prevent that cycle. I usually have one, maybe two revisions that the client can have. This is especially good when there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen on the client side. Maybe you're doing work for a big company and there's a lot of stakeholders on their side that sort of gets to pick apart your design. Basically you're saying, hey, no, there's a limit on how many revisions you can have. But also this can work for, you know, the small client Client that wants you to paint their grandmother or something or do a poems or something like that this basically says hey you only have a certain amount of revision you can't hold me hostage in this design phase so make sure you have a revision clause the second clause that I have is like a loose rendering statement basically saying that my design is a loose rendering of what I'm going to sort of execute in the end so the end results may not look exactly like that design that I have. So this statement right here is especially for artists like myself that do a lot of work that is improvisational, loose color work, and you know, everything is not going to be exactly the same. And everything is not going to be exactly the same as the actual design. So the loose design that I have can be put together with different photos and you know, different color schemes. I'm basically just trying to show the client, hey, this is the scale or proportion or the subject matter that I'm going to execute in the end but it will not look exactly like the design that is just a design to help you imagine what this end product will look like and then the final design will be something sort of similar to my previous work the third clause that you need to have in your contract is a payment clause basically just saying the who what when where and why is when it comes to the payment so this is where like down payments come into play okay how much are you going to get paid during the down payment process even before I start designing I want to know how much I need to be paid and making it refundable or non-refundable always make sure you make it non-refundable because anything can happen like COVID and jobs just go away and projects stop so make sure it's non-refundable and this also just talks about ways you're getting paid and how you're getting paid some clients you know they have to pay you a certain way but sometimes you can say hey I need a check by this date or I need to be paid within a certain amount of time there's a lot of companies and brands that have a net 30. So basically a net 30 is saying after you get done with your project and you send in an invoice, they're going to take 30 days to actually pay you. Sometimes this does not work with an artist's cash flow situation. So you have to make sure you put that in the contract, the who, what, when, where's and why's of how you are getting paid. The next thing that you need to have in your contract is the copyright clause. Basically, when you do your work, when you do a painting, when you do a poem and you, you know, you give it to someone, basically they own the physical sort of rights to that artwork. So if I do it on the wall, the building owner owns the wall and the artwork on the wall, but they do not own the copyrights, the intellectual property rights. In your copyright clause, you can say, hey, I'm going to give you limited copyrights or I'm going to give you all the copyrights or I retain all the copyrights. So this basically just establishes what is going to happen with the copyrights. And a lot of times these brands and clients want the copyrights to do the marketing. Maybe it's for a hotel and a hotel wants to make sure that when they take a picture and it has your artwork in it that they can use that in marketing on the website whatever I recently did a project with the Denver Broncos where I painted all the Hall of Famers it was in my style
now, but it was so client driven and so heavily Denver Broncos that it wasn't something that, you know, I would want to sort of keep and hold on to. So they have the copyrights to that mural that I did. To me, that is not a problem because I'm painting other people and I'm painting, you know, them in the Denver Broncos uniform. So it's nothing like super creative for me. There's other projects where I want to retain the copyrights because it was a wholly original idea from me. So just make sure you have a copyright clause that states who owns the copyrights. Are you giving them exclusive rights? Are you giving them limited rights to sort of copy the work? for marketing, advertising, whatever, social media. Having this clause will sort of cut out a lot of the ambiguity. The next clause that you need to have is a time frame clause. The time frame clause just talks about the start dates and the completion dates for different stages of the process. So you can have a start date and a completion date for the design phase, for the actual project that you're actually painting or you know you're dancing or you're doing videography for someone you want to make sure that you have a reasonable uh, start and completion date so that this project doesn't last forever within that clause you want to make sure that you talk about you know things that can happen that will delay you because you don't want there to be a lot of contention just for you know having a reasonable sort of delay maybe you had to go to the hospital maybe someone died in your family you want to make sure that you have a little bit of a buffer in there um, that allows you to say, hey, there may be some, some delays, but this is the uh, start date, this is the completion date that we are aiming for but it's not always guaranteed. And lastly, I have a client artist obligation clause. This basically says that, hey, these are the obligations that I am taking on for this project. Pinning the wall, providing insurance to you. Maybe I have an obligation to deliver the artwork in a particular way. And for the client, it could be, hey, the client has an obligation to make sure they have a drop sink for me to wash my art tools in or they have an obligation to supply equipment or materials or you know provide parking for me when I'm sort of painting their wall. A lot of times in my client obligation clauses I'll make sure that the client is obligated to provide me with the aerial equipment needed to complete a project meaning they will be the one to provide a boom lift. So this is something that is really important mainly because you wanna make sure that when you're doing a project for a client that they're providing everything that you need to be successful. So those are the main clauses that I have in my contract. Those are the ones that I make sure that I sort of look over and make sure that with each project they are addressing certain situations and concerns that I have with that particular project. And in the end, just know that contracts are whatever you make of it. So you can add as much as you want in there. I will have a link in the description, like I said, of a template contract that has some of these clauses in there that I used in the past. It'll be stripped down, but you can look at that for verbiage for your own contract. So hopefully this helped out and I will see you guys next time. Peace.